Two months ago, I was halfway through cleaning up the Athol plaques, the first batch of them, and I had to intervene and get some parts done for Keith Rucker while I was working on these. And this is one of them that I cleaned up really good. The others I still got to work on. These are Keith's straight edges. He had the need. He needed some prior to the Good of the Land event, so I was able to get these out. And I was hoping I was going to be able to knock out the Athol patterns before I left, but it just wasn't working out that way. So I had to build a furnace, a road furnace, and I'd already had a burner built several months back. And I decided to go ahead and get on this in between everything else as well. And uh, it took every single second to get all this round because you have to ram refractory on the lining first, let that sit a few days. Then you have to ram the lid or the cap, let that sit a few days. Then you tear the form out after you've done all that. And I didn't put wire in the lid like I usually do. I am trusting these bolts to hold the refractory in place. So anyway, this is after the lid was poured and I'm trying to pull the lid off and get the form material out at this point. As I've said before, I'm no welder. It's pathetic. I had to drag my dad over here to do it for me. I got it. I got by, but the welds were so ugly I wasn't about to let anybody see that, so I had him fix it all. I'm vitrifying the new furnace here, and uh, the thing steamed and steamed. I probably steamed four gallons of water out of that thing. As you can see here, it's steadily coming out. And this is after, this is after probably four hours of running it. And uh, I never did run it on, yeah, I never did run it on diesel that night. I just used propane. So I didn't get it up to iron melting temps, but uh, I got pretty close. That's about as hot as it's going to get on propane. And I raided my plate off my old furnace to put on this one. I'm going to have to get Tom Utley to make me another one to go back on the old one. But I got the plate mounted just as my buddy Mike Wiggins from Tifton, Georgia pulls up. And that there is my aluminum melting furnace that he's leaning against. And then Keith gave me that core machine that you saw in the previous photo. I got a chance to stop by and visit my buddy Andrew Alexander, the Blacksmith Museum. And man, he's got some really neat stuff. It's, I was really glad I got a chance to spend some time with him. And that's him on the left and Dressed on the right. And Dressed to help me get some stuff done for the good of the land. I really appreciated that. And this is the pattern Emma Ritson made that was supposed to be at the Good of the Land Fest to be made. We were supposed to pour an anvil and it made it to my house the day we were down there in Temple, Texas. So unfortunately we did not get to pour it. So we have that to look forward to next year. But look, look at the quality of the detail on the other side. She did a, she did an excellent job. It's a split pattern, and uh, I'm anxious to try it out. I just hate that it couldn't have got here a couple days earlier, but it's not her fault. She did everything she could to get this out in a record amount of time. And of course, look what I got to bring home. And Mike had dropped my furnace off in Meridian for me, so I wouldn't have to handle it from here. So he just took it straight from Texas to the Soule Museum, and that's the foundry building. Um, and this is the old core oven on the right. 
This is the old cupola. Pretty cool, huh? And the induction furnace. And then upstairs is the original pattern room and that's worth, I could spend all day in that. Of course this is some of the engines running and this is on real steam, nothing's on air out there. This is the coreless. This is the little coreless. That's pretty cool. And I don't know why, but my buddy in Memphis and his wife usually come down for this event. I have not had a chance to call him. I'm going to try to do that tomorrow to make sure they're okay. But they usually have a nice selection of small engines like that on display. And I always look forward to seeing them. And uh, now that things have slowed down, I'll find out what happened. But this is the Corliss on the other side. The governor. More engines. Now I filmed this before the people started crashing the gate. And I could kick myself because I didn't get any pictures of Adam, uh, Kilroy, or Gary the uh, following day, that Saturday. This was on a Friday morning before everybody showed up. I got one picture of Adam with us while we were eating dinner Saturday night, and that's it. Uh, I didn't even get any pictures of him when we were in Texas, and I, I didn't realize that. I, I didn't catch that until uh, I went to cut the other video, but that was my setup from the back. And like I said, I, I was doing all this before anybody was coming in, so it wasn't that barren, I promise you. There's a lot to see, though. I had a little downtime, and this little engine, you step up on that plank, and it'll raise anybody else up and down, but unfortunately I stopped it. Now these two guys are very attentive. I wish I could have had more time with them. Miss Skipper, which is a teacher in Meridian, uh, let me have these boys for a little bit Saturday, I believe. Uh, Swanick and Ahmed, and th like I said, they were very attentive. They uh, they caught on really quick on everything I was telling them. We took a that's Swanick and that's Amon and we went up in the pattern room and that's Grayson. This little fellow's name is Grayson and uh, there's Adam, Abby, me and Josie and we were eating at Whiteman's and that's the only picture I got of them. But uh, they were with us in Texas too. I, I just when you're trying to do everything else, it's hard to take pictures and keep up with everything. But anyway, we had a good meal there, and then we had breakfast with them at Cracker Barrel the next morning before they left out. And that's me unloading a muller. Look how I got that rigged up. I took the two-wheeler and just strapped it to it, and I could move it around easily. And then as soon as I got the truck unloaded, I had to go to the house to dad's and get the trailer and clean it out and put it back up because I didn't get to go on the hayride the night before but I got to take care of everything and this is the aluminum furnace uh, it's a reverberator you throw everything in on the top the burners on the top I got to do a little work on the blower and now I'm getting back to grinding the gates and once I get the edges cleaned up then I'll smooth up the faces, get those cleaned up, wire wheeled, and uh, it's, like I said, I've still got about a dozen more to cast, and that's some of the ones I've already started cleaning on. I'm scared to do a pour for at least another week because I had an accident, and it was burning my hand pretty good this weekend in Meridian, so I want to give my hand a little break to heal up. And this is what happened. I dumped a crucible of iron on my left hand. And then it went from there. <laughs> it just went from bad to worse. Uh, it rolled down my leg, went down my uh, leg, and 
but I was wearing spats, so I'm protected there. Uh, if you don't have a strong stomach, then don't look at the last picture here, but this is, that's the only damage I had from all that, so. Anyway, it, that was the only injury I had, so I'll be okay. This is healing up pretty good. I hope you enjoyed what little bit of video and clips I had to share. If you can stay tuned to A-Bomb 79, I'm sure he's going to be posting some good videos of the whole event.
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little slideshow and clips. I couldn't take any good pictures during the festival at Sule. I wish I had, but uh, there will be some more circulating. I'm sure Adam's posting some soon, so y'all keep your eye out for that. Have a good day.